so let's move to today's session then and today what we are going to do is we are going to talk about what is called as cache subsystem what do you so you've heard about caches what are caches What is uh, a cache? Ca caches are the sm uh, small capacity, high speed memories that are uh, uh, that are placed uh, nearer to the processor, uh, so that it ma uh, so that processor doesn't wait to, uh, to get uh, the uh, chunks of the memory directly from the main memory. It can look at the cache itself. Mm -hmm. uh, so that that is. That is a little extra detail. My question was actually, I was just wanting to arrive at what is a cache. So cache by itself means something that remains hidden, but that is something which is very readily available to you. Hmm? That is where you would use the term cache. And over here, when we're talking about cache subsystem, uh, we are, as Ranjit mentioned, we're talking about uh, something which uh, some small memory which could be placed very close to the processor so that the overall access time for the processor is reduced let us look at why it is needed so in a typical system in a typical you know uh, memory system you would see that there is a cpu and then there is a cache which is typically an sram associated with it the SRAM would interact with what we call as a DRAM and which would then interact with what is called as the hard disk. Hmm? As you move from hard disk to caches, the speed increases. So in the caches also, there could be L1, L2, L3 kind of caches. So L1 means for level one, closest to the processor. L2 is level two and level three is closer to the output, to the, to the main memory. That is the DRAM. Okay. So what has happened over the past many years is that the processor speed has increased kind of exponentially or largely exponentially at a very fast pace. Whereas the main memory speed has not increased at the same pace. It has been, a, it is also improving, but at a much lower pace. So it was, uh, 2x performance in one and a half years and over here DRAM 2x performance over 10 years. So it is not that it is not improving, it is improving, but at a much slower pace. And therefore, because of this, you know, performance gap between processor and the memory, because of this performance gap, we need to use something which we call as caches. So what, and, and there is another reason why this is possible. What we say is, so there is this, uh, uh, there is this reference to locality of references, mention of locality of references. What this means is that typically when you are running a program on a system or something like that, uh, you, will, you will usually use some lines of the same program over and over again. For example, uh, if we, if we say that we are working on this PPT presentation, huh, then it is evident that the program, the, the instruction codes linked to uh, rendering a PPT onto the screen will be run over and over again. You know? I would not be using a calculator, like when I'm, when, my, my, when I'm showing a PPT, then I'm not always using a calculator simultaneously. I may use it, but I may not always use it. For example, at this point of time, I'm using a PowerPoint application, I'm using Zoom application, I'm using another streaming application so that I'm able to communicate with all of you. So these three or four things that are running on my computer and uh, not much else. I do not really need data linked to uh, one of my projects or data links to one of the presentations that I made yesterday to a faculty meeting or anything like that. So the information that I need is, is not the entire hard disk. I do not need the entire hard disk to be made available to me or the processor at all times. The processor would usually work on much smaller chunks of data. And that this data in terms of address is also referenced close together. Hmm? That uh, when I save something, 
let us say when i save a movie or when i save a music somewhere uh, the music file is is long enough uh, to say that okay 10 words it will occupy or 100 words it will occupy and so on and these words usually will be consecutive words because that is how you would typically want to store so when the processor would want to render your movie or it would need to uh, need to amplify the music that you are playing it will be there will be a locality of references in the sense that adjacent address addresses would be accessed uh, every passing second or every passing moment is this part clear so because we have this uh, locality of references we say that uh, we do not really need the entire big memory to be accessed every cycle let us use a relatively small sram which can be placed physically close to the processor so that not only it would have a smaller access time the physical proximity also reduces wire delays Huh? so what we are essentially trying to do is we are trying to keep commonly accessed data in smaller or faster proper, faster memory and when we do this another thing that we take care of is suppose this is l3 cache the l2 cache l1 cache and over here it is processor what we also ensure is the data of l1 cache is also available in l2 cache somewhere and data of l2 cache let us say this is also available somewhere in my l1 cache uh, l3 cache so this is referred to as what is called as inclusion property that uh, a lower level memory if we say that l1 is lower level than uh, l2 or l3 is almost always included in the higher level of the memory so all the data of l1 is available in l2 all the data of l2 is available in l3 hmm i have spoken quite a bit moved many slides in one go any questions but i moved fast simply because i felt you have done the ca course most of you and therefore should be able to capture it Uh, oh. sir so yes. by this line physical proximity reduces wire delay what are we trying to say uh so the wire delays are reduced what would happen access would be faster hello hello yes sir if i reduce the wire delays the access would be faster the purpose of using a small sram was also the same thing that you are able to because it's a small sram not the full dram uh, the access times are shorter are smaller so you are overall able to access the content much faster sir uh, if processor miss uh, if if it is a miss in the l1 cache if i have to bring it from the dram so first uh, directly i will bring dram to l1 or uh, l3 l2 and l1 in hierarchy yeah so that we will come to we miss ki baat to bhi humne kari nahi so we'll talk about hits and misses in just a little while abhi tak jo maine kaha any questions there l1 l2 that is especially referring to as the virtual memory i'm sorry so the l1 l2 uh, concept hierarchy that is you're calling the virtual memory here No, virtual memory concept is different if you done the computer architecture course this reference is coming from there don't worry about it it's not something that you need to worry about i just gave this so that those of you who have done ca course are able to understand it better virtual memory is a standard term sir so i got disconnected while you were explaining this physical proximity thing can you please explain that okay Okay, so my question was, Faisal, uh, yes. what happens when the wire delay reduces? When the wire uh, will able to ex like it will be faster when the delay reduces. Yeah, so it means that you will be able to run the memory at the processor speed. 
Yes, sir. So we were not able to directly access the DRAM because there is a huge gap in the performance. That was what we were looking in the yes. previous slide. There's a huge performance gap. Now by keeping the memory close, using a small, first we used an SRAM, then we yes. used a small SRAM, and then we placed it close to the processor. All these three things, using an SRAM, yes. SRAMs are faster than DRAMs. A small SRAM means a small SRAM is definitely faster than a bigger SRAM and keeping it physically close to the processor so that delays in the wires also reduce. Okay. We're doing all this to fill the performance gap that we talked about in the previous slide. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Yes, sir, we are doing all this to that uh, bridge that gap that you were showing earlier, the DRAM and the... Yes, because I want my processor to not keep waiting. I want my processor to operate very fast because this is also technology only so that same technology is a processor yeah so okay okay sir. so why do we uh, have to store some data of l1 into l2 and some data of l2 into l3 okay why do you think we need to do that so you're asking why do we need the inclusion property huh. yes sir. why is it that l1 should always be available in l2 and l2 should always be available in l3 why do you think so what do, what do you what can you imagine as a reason? So basically, I can imagine if if there is any issue with L one, will we can fetch data with L two from L two? Yes. Anything so else that you can think of? No, nice, sir. Anyone else who can think of something else? Uh, sir, can this be due to the to maintain the cache coherency? Yeah. So that is the question. Why do we need to maintain cache coherency? Uh, so, so suppose some uh, we have two cores running parallelly and uh, a particular data uh, is being uh, uh, read in one of the cores and uh, it is being manipulated uh, it is being computed in other cores so when there is uh, a uh, when the data is written uh, suppose in the core b then uh, this particular uh, data is captured by the uh, higher level of the cache and then the uh, snoop control unit uh, senses it and the other core, uh, the core A will check whether if the data is changed or not. Then uh, through the hierarchy, that uh, particular data will be changed. Hmm. So let us put it a little simply for the class because not everyone in the class may have done CA and, and in that detail that you are talking about. Hmm? Yes. So uh, a, a very simple thing is that suppose your processor, you know, when you are processing, you said A plus B is equal to C, now the content of location C are changed because you did an operation inside the processor. Yes, sir. Now let us say there is another core which is using similar data or same data. Should we tell that core that, okay, C is now updated? Okay, so, Achha. yes. So sir. now how do I tell core 2 that C is updated unless I have an L2 there where A, B, C are all stored huh. and L2 I tell that okay update the C. How will processor 2 come to know that there is a change somewhere? Hmm? So that is about cache coherency. So there are many units there which tell that okay this is how the data is updated and this is how any change in data across or due to one core is communicated to another core and so on. Uh, I would also bring in the concept of, hey, you see coherency is linked here, but a still more fundamental concept. Suppose you want to write something in uh, from your processor or to the main memory now. Now the main memory access takes hundreds of nanoseconds. You cannot really do it. You cannot really wait those hundreds of nanoseconds. So what do you want to do? Okay, I will now write back into L2 and only in L2 and then I will say L2 will automatically plan and write in the main memory. So if I have to write back some data into L2, then L2 should already have that location with it first. So that is another reason why inclusion is important that the higher level of uh, Memory should always contain the lower level memory contents in it. Okay.
so writing in l2 means we have to first write it in l1 and that will same be copied in l2 or directly we are writing in l2 you tell me i think we should write in l1 first right yes hai na you have to otherwise how will you maintain the coherency between l1 and l2 also the processor would write something in l1 it would write it within one cycle now when l1 so we will talk about this when in in just a few minutes also now when l1 needs to uh, put some other data in this particular location the new data that was already written uh, in the memory should be written into the l2 cache so when you write into the l2 cache can still be variable when you are being replaced you can write then or whenever if there was a write operation on you you could write then that is a oa operating system issue but uh, you first write into l1 because the processor is interacting only with l1 processor does not interact directly with l2 and then through l1 you will write in l2 whenever you have on uh, an opportunity or whenever there is a need is that clear yes sir okay. so sir we uh, like the uh, everything that gets read or write it goes to this whole hierarchy of l1 l2 l3 and main memory yes so what that would mean a uh, more power consumption in terms of the right we are gaining in terms of speed but in terms of power we are is a cost okay mm. you anyway had to read okay so but Hello? like we are right we are reading and writing the same thing at multiple places right i mean first you have to go to that and that and that but you are but look at it like this see a plus b equal to c you did it once but then on the same screen you brought in another data on the same screen you brought in another data so you would actually be ending up doing this a plus b equal to c hundreds of times if there was no cache hierarchy then all these hundreds of times you will have to go and access the main memory that is much much more power than doing all these operations right away in a small on chip cache okay the power kind of system bus is more as compared to this Okay. Yeah, you have to go off the chip. You have to drive big, big buffer so that the off chip signal has some current, some significant current and voltage. So, as soon as you talk of going off chip, power consumption goes for a toss. Okay. Sir. Okay. 